YouTube, what is up? We're back with another video. And you guys saw the title. So let's get right into it. How I made $30,000 in 56 days. Now, I've always had an interest in making money online. Uh, ever since I was like 16, and I've kind of had that entrepreneur mindset where I've looked at how to make money, how people make money, and I wanted to do it from the own comfort of not only my home, but my peace of mind not working that normal nine to five. I've tried e-com, I've tried digital marketing, web design, um, and even a clothing brand. So it's pretty crazy to think that none of this money was made online. Uh, so let's get right into it. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, uh, give a comment, and let me know what type of content you guys want to see. Um, this is going to be more raw footage stuff. Uh, the editing just is crazy long. So stick with me. If you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, it started, let's see, last year. Uh, I was a junior in college, and I had one more summer where you consider myself a student. I was looking to get my internship um, done over the summer somewhere to gym where there was like fitness, um, trainer, something like that. There's a successful, what do you call him, CEO of a pretty big gym, works with Sebum that I was trying to intern at and it ended up falling through. And last minute, I finally gave in to one of my friends who wanted me to go sell with him in the summer. And, uh, it was door-to-door -door sales. and. I'm from a small town, so I've never even seen a door-to-door -door salesman. I didn't even know what soliciting was the first day I knocked. And so it was pretty crazy to see this job opportunity and have a lot of questions. So I remember last minute, I jumped into a call, kind of understood what was going on. We talked about what, what the company was, how it worked, what we were selling. And it's pretty normal to be skeptical. I mean, I was skeptical. My whole family was, um, especially living in the middle of nowhere. So I had no idea what to ex expect going into the job. Uh, training was two to three times a week. Just hop on a call and learn what I was selling, the script, um, how everything should flow, and then also nonverbals. So we worked on what happens in a conversation outside of just talking, outside of the um, the voices, um, whether that's hand gestures, eye contact, um, eye breaks, how you stand, what makes someone comfortable. And I never had sales experience before. So to start learning that was really weird at first, but it was actually kind of crazy to see how all of that can actually create a conversation. Um, and the words are only like 30% of an interaction. So to think, where's the other 70% 70, 70 at? Uh, well, going through your day to day, you feel like everyone is just talking, but there's there's so much more to it. So I ended up finishing school in the end of May, and the last week of May was my first week selling. We went to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, it was we lived in an apartment. There was four of us, and we were all selling. Um, they were all college students as well. I actually knew three of them, and I had to meet uh, one. He was from a local college, and. The first week was definitely one of the most humbling experiences I've ever had. Uh, being someone who has played sports their whole life and not really ever been like told, like you get told no all the time. And you know, you always, you talk to the people you want to talk to, you go to school, you get good grades, um, you play sports, uh, you, you get told no and you get yelled at and stuff, but it's all through something you care about. So when you go out onto the doors, and you know you get 60 70 no's a day people are just yelling at you without even knowing what you're doing uh, it's pretty humbling and it's definitely can be a mind twist so I remember we shouted our boss for the first three hours and it was the first day we were out there um, and it was my turn to knock my first door so I walked up just stood at the door ended up not being able to knock it and he's like, no, just knock it. Like, you'll never see this person again. And I was like, yeah, you're right, but I just don't think this is for me. He's like, nah, you need to knock it. So I ended up knocking it after arguing with him for about 20 minutes. And the lady saw the whole thing, and she didn't even answer the door. So 
that was really wasn't my first interaction, but that was my first attempt. My first interaction was like 10 minutes later and they answered the door. I got through my intro and I, they, I just blanked. Like I had no idea what to say. And she was just staring at me and I was staring back and my boss was behind me just, he had his shoulders crossed, just staring at me. And I was like, I turned and looked at him and I threw my hands up. I was like, what? And he just shook his head. And I was like, you're not gonna help me? He's like, no. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. And so I turned back around, tried my best. Um, definitely ended up being a no, but the experience, like I said, it's a humbling experience and it puts you in an extremely uncomfortable spot, but it definitely benefited me in the long run. By the end of that day, um, I had officially two sales. I sold my first door I ever knocked by myself, and then I sold my last door. Um, it was a really cool experience. There's a lot of learning involved, and the idea of closing someone and introing and like pitching them. Um, it's very put in order, and it's really cool to see it flow through with a conversation. Um, and yeah, so that's how it started. I remember by the end of that week, I didn't have a car partner, so I was alone the whole week. And that was probably mentally the toughest thing that I've I've ever been through as well. Um, I remember that stormed and I sat in my car for like eight hours. So that job pushed me to my limits and I really was ready to go home. I remember packing up and they were we were all moving to Kansas City due to some uh, problems or whatever. And on our way to Kansas City, I was like, I'm just going to go home. I already packed everything up. And then everyone's like, no, you don't go home. Boss is like, hey, if you want to throw in the white towel, throw it in, like, whatever. But when other people are successful, uh, don't try to come back. And I ended up staying. And that same week, something just clicked. I ended up doing 10K in revenue. And or I think it was like 11K. And I led the entire Kansas City team. So that was a very change around moment that switched my mindset. And it was something that the rest of the summer I was able to carry and I held 10 11 K weeks every single week I was out there for the two months now towards the end of the let's see every single week did about 10 10 K um, started to average really well um, I had one of the best closing ratios in the entire area actually the best on the entire team I uh, ended up being about 113 people that I talked to. I was able to close. So that right there shows you, you have to talk to 13 people and have 12 of them tell you no before someone says yes. And the average rookie probably has a DM closing ratio of like one in 30. So if that doesn't tell you how much rejection you have to face, not that, but also people, you know, yelling, get off my property, you know, things like that. And then towards the end of the summer, I started realizing, you know, I was like, oh, I'm ready to go home. Like, this is my first summer out here. I had nothing. Didn't know what to expect. Um, I'm ready to go home, see what, whatever. And they set my goal to do 100K in revenue. And the moment I hit 100K, I was free. I could pack up and go home. And so I uh, did 10K in two days, which was crazy. And because usually it takes like five to six days. But I did 10K in two days and was able to pack up and go home and enjoy Um enjoy a little bit of my summer and with that I realized that I made more money than I'd ever made in my entire life uh, my weekly paycheck was substantially more than any paycheck I've ever had and those were two week paychecks so to get that in a weekly paycheck every single week of the summer was just absolutely crazy like I didn't really know what to do uh, and that was someone who I would consider like I was just an above average rookie that's not even going into my second summer or leading a team or anything like that that's just strictly based on my own sales um, on an above average scale and when I came back from the summer I had changed so much not only were my talking skills better not only were my hand gestures better my eye contact but the way I held myself when I had conversations, when I met people, and how confident I seemed when it came to just a new environment or a new crowd was like completely 180. Um, all of the social skills I lost during COVID, I got right back and on top of it. I was able to public speak a lot easier and now I'm doing YouTube. So, or at least taking YouTube more seriously. And then with that money, I was able to get a better camera, um, get a 
new mic, a professional mic with a, for a really good deal and really try to feed some hobbies. And outside of that, now all I do is recruit. I hit team leader status and I'm able to enjoy six, six months of doing whatever I want to do, just attending some meetings and making myself better, but not working a nine to five every single day of my life. So I'm really excited to see where the next few years take me, um, where this job takes me, where door to door sales can come from and see what the new career paths inside of sales uh, can bring me. So with that being said, that's kind of my story on how I made $30,000 in 56 days. If you guys have any questions, have any ideas, want to know more, want to know what it's like to sell a little bit more in depth when it comes in the middle of the summer, um, the relationships you build, anything like that, make sure you guys like and subscribe, leave it in the comments. I'll keep posting some content, get some reels up and hopefully grow this channel. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.